So here I am uh, in the doctor's office waiting to talk to him about my upcoming radio embolization that I've discussed several times on this channel. Um, I had a good long break since my chemo and I just, I didn't have to face this. I didn't have to deal with any of it, you know. I mean, I had doctor's appointments, I had the angiogram, uh, but um, I had a good long while where I just, I didn't have to worry about it. It was just in the background. And now here it is, right in front of my face again. And I'm afraid. I don't know what else to say. Um, this is what I have to do. I, I don't have a choice. I don't want to do this. I'm afraid of it. Um, I'm not even really sure why. You know, I, mean, I, I wasn't afraid of chemotherapy going into it, although had I known what I was in for, I probably would have been. But this scares me in a way that chemotherapy never did. Maybe it's the word radiation. Maybe it's the fact that there's risk of liver failure. Maybe there's, I don't know, there's something else, but it, it just fills me with a, an anxiety that I just don't know how to deal with. Um, I wish I didn't have to do this. It feels like jumping out of an airplane with a parachute on. The only reason I'm doing it is because the plane is going to crash. I don't want to jump, but I have to. So, anyway. We've talked about it before, so I'm not going to go into the procedure, but we're going to see about um, scheduling this for a Thursday because I have a three day weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, but it looks like I'm still going to have to take a week off work just because they're going to be doing this as an angiogram going up through my groin and I'm not going to be able to walk around very well uh, for a while and I'm not going to be able to lift anyone at work and I'm not going to be able to be close to people for a while. Maja. Uh, is going to have to uh, leave my apartment for a little while. Um, fortunately, I found a co-worker who is willing to take her in, uh, and hopefully that'll be okay. Um, he's, he's met her before. They get along, but he's got cats, and we don't know how they're going to react to each other. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I guess that's really about it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I think I would just end up repeating myself. I don't know, it's gonna make, make sure it's kind of a short video, but I think that's kind of it for now. Um, I might add more to this later if it occurs to me, but for now that's it, so take care. So just as a, an add-on here, uh, I just had my blood taken by perhaps the most sympathetic, charismatic, understanding nurse that I have ever met. Uh, at first I didn't want to talk at all, uh, just feeling the way that I feel, and um, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to talk, I didn't want to look at her, but she was just so, so kind, and I don't know if she said this uh, just to get me talking, or if it's actually true, but apparently uh, I share the exact same birth date down to the year as her sister. Um, and it, it worked, it got me talking, and, uh, and then we talked a little bit about my cancer, and, and she, she said that she wanted to be my cheerleader, you know? She, 
she was just so nice. Complete stranger. I only talked to her for five minutes. People like that are just so wonderful, you know? I really need people like that in my life. She told, she told me to come back and, and tell her later how I do. And you know what? I think I will. Anyway. That's it. Um, uh, that's all I really wanted to say. So, yeah, okay. That's it. Um... Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Uh, we scheduled uh, the appointment for February the 8th, which is next Thursday, um, 10 a.m. And uh, I'll have to get a ride to and from because it's more sedation and I'll, I'll be too out of it to drive. So uh, I gotta look for somebody to give me a ride and then, uh, and then yeah. Um, I'll update as we go. So, talk to you next time. Bye.